this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to implement the Puppet Tool to your character's face and combine that with null objects that can later be controlled by expression sliders. So the next stage that uh, we need to deal with is the Puppet Pins. So we'll be using the Puppet Tool to create facial distortions on the character. This is the face that I'm going to manipulate. If we look at it on its own, that's what we're going to be playing with. I'm going to just create a null object here. The null object is actually going to be the reference point for the pins that will drive the facial expressions. The null objects will also be the things that can be controlled by the expression sliders. They're a lot easier to manage than actually trying to manipulate individual puppet pins. And for null objects, the anchor point is actually in the top left corner, so when you position them, you want to have the top left corner right over the spot where you're going to put the pin. So the next thing to do here is actually start duplicating out the null objects and naming them accordingly to where you place them. I'm going to just skip ahead here and show you what mine looks like once it's all put together. Alright, so magically bounced forward, and as you can see I have a cheek left, cheek right, chin, brow center, brow left, brow right, and a nose. And I'm just adding right here one for the mouth. I've come up with these positions and locations through a lot of practice making a number of different faces and I find these are pretty essential points on any face. I'm going to have a number of other puppet pins but not all of them need to be driven about. Okay the next step is actually laying in the pins. First position your, uh, first lay in your actual pins that you'll be manipulating. These pins Remember to put them in the top left corner of the null object. Let's zoom in a little bit. Make sure I'm fairly well put here. So what we're going to do is anchor these pins to these null objects so that these null objects can drive the face. Okay, so I've laid these ones in. So let's let's try let's try anchoring them now. Um, I have a little piece of code that I have built for this. Um, it's in my effects control or my presets. Um, I'm just going to pull it up. Um, I'm just going to take any object and, and stick it on there. So user presets, uh, puppet pin link to object. So it's going to, it's going to throw me an error right now because it was it was a preset based on another character. Uh, from a previous character, so and I just threw it onto the eyebrow. I just need I just need this little chunk of code right here. So I'm going to delete delete this puppet tool off there. There we go. Okay. So the next thing I'm going to do is I want the I only want the puppet pins meshes here. Now I don't need to. I have in the past renamed all these. I don't think it's a hundred percent necessary at this point. So just uh, I'm going to alt click this, paste that code. This is the layer that we want to follow. So what I can do is actually I can highlight this little chunk of code like that and I can pick whip this. I know this is the chin so I can go up and pick whip here. So it actually replaces that N is the layer name, the layer that we need to follow and it will just automatically replace that. Um, so what's our next pin is the mouth. So I'm going to click that, um, scroll up, mm, this is so tight, oh right. I'm going to paste my code, scroll up here, grab that chunk, leave that semicolon in there. Uh, what's it called? Okay, so this is the mouth. Uh, this will be the mouth face, okay. Pasting the code, the, that code again, and scrolling up. Leave the semicolon in there, don't take it out. If you do, it will mess up everything. The semicolon in expressions is actually used to separate one line of code from the other. It essentially tells After Effects that that line of code is finished and consider the next line a new line altogether. If you don't put it in, it continues to read the next line as one, one line of code and it can get really confused because all of a sudden the syntax is wrong. Okay, so this is... What was that one? Brow center. Okay. Pasting the code. Going up. Now I can't exactly see what my pins are, but I can guess based on the face. That's cheek right. There we go. 
I'm just going to finish these up really quick and show you what it looks like. So now, when I move these null objects, I'm first going to lock this guy so I can grab these. There we go. Now it follows along. Now, as you can see, we have a bit of a problem. The whole face is moving. I just, I don't want the whole face to move. I just want parts of the face to move. Um, this part moves okay, but again, we have this, it's just not moving quite right. So the next stage is, is refining the puppet mesh. In the next video, I'm going to show you how to further refine the puppet mesh using some really handy features included with the puppet tool.